you. It is now recording. Have fun. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. <laughs> oh, What's up? I... You good? It's been yeah. a really long time. <laughs> Absolutely. You look well, Gemma. Nice to see you again. Yeah, yeah, I'm good. Um, um, a lot's changed, I think, since we last since we last spoke properly. Yeah. Uh, but no, it's all good. So, yeah. So, we met obviously quite. Uh, I want to say when did we meet? Twenty seventeen. I think it was. Yeah. Um, and you were kind of supporting me with, well, a bit of both. I think it's physically and mentally. Um. So obviously I know who you are, <laughs> but can you introduce yourself to the people that are watching the uh, festival? Absolutely. So uh, my name is Lynn. Um, I'm actually from Sweden from the beginning, but I've been living in the UK for nine years now. I work uh, with several things, but I work as a chiropractor mainly, so manual therapy. Uh, sports massage therapy and also as a clinical hypnotherapist um, on top of that I do competitive running extreme distances so everything from 50k up to several hundred miles that's my game so that's a bit short about me yeah brilliant <laughs> um, which is inspiring in itself um, so obviously JCF is a charity that works with young people um helping them with their uh mental health well-being um showing them their full potential um and hopefully our end goal is stamping out teen suicide um mainly in the uk but obviously across the world as well um so what would you say your well what's your what's your story uh, what how have you got from being where you were before to being where you are today because obviously I think we've spoken before and I know that there was a, a change that happened in your mental health similar to mine that yeah well in brief not to drag out for several hours or days <laughs> I was I did not re I felt, felt very confused during my teens um and I didn't particularly like the school environment, was like boxing people in in a format that did not suit me. I think if they would have been labeled me back then, AHDH, whatever, you know, bipolar, you name it. But I never went down that route. So I was the naughty kid who couldn't sit still. So I didn't really, I wasn't bad in school. I just found my, I was into horse riding. I found animals much more helpful and relaxing. Um, and as a result, I didn't know what I would want to, put, to become when I grew up. What did I want to study? It was so many things. I started to do drama, which was an outlet for me. It was very, you know, expressive. I needed that. Um, but I knew that I wouldn't last. That wouldn't be my thing. It was just too many drama queens and, and not really my game. Um, but I feel some kind of purpose. I was seen and I think that was the key. No one saw me. No one could listen to me. No one really understood me. And it took a couple of decades before something happened. And I went from working in a... Um, environment in an office advertising very creative to just realizing do you know what I need a big change in my life and prior to that I made several changes throughout my my life but that was the biggest thing and that's when I got into running and um, I had a horse at that time and it, my life was basically screwed and I lied down on the floor one evening looking up into the ceiling saying I can't sink any further, you know. I was, you know, not feeling in a good place. And I thought this was the abyss. And I said, please help me, someone, whatever. And through a series of events, I got into running. I realized I wanted to become a chiropractor. I did not have the grades. I had to do a serious hard year to get my grades up. I wasn't a university student. I mean, seriously, I could barely sit still. But I made it happen. So my biggest thing was I did this race. 
I started to run. I hated running. I was a lazy goalkeeper. I loved this running. It gave me an outlet because I realized I needed to slow down. So my second race ever was a 250 kilometers, around 200 miles, 150 miles, nonstop race where I learned everything about life and running. And I knew, could I finish that bloody race? I could do a five-year degree. And needless to say, I finished the race. I was first woman, not that that matters. Um, and I finished my degree and here I am working as you know, my dream profession and more the rover. So yeah, everything yeah. is possible. That's the key, you know? Yeah, absolutely. And I think back when we, I think probably back when we first, first met because obviously my mum knew you before me um and when I was probably the year I was in my lowest is when we met and I've always described what happened to me as a mental a mental flick a mental switch um because it was and it was and the reason for that was actually because of you and I don't think we've ever spoken about it but when I used to see you for it was it was hypnotherapy, wasn't it? I used to yeah. see you for that. Um, and you showed me someone online. Um, and I think you probably know who I'm talking about. Um, you showed me David Goggins. Yeah, the hardcore. Yeah. See, back then, I wanted to understand it. I wanted to get it. Um, but what I didn't realize back then was I needed to get rid of what was in my head before. I could sort everything else out um, because that was the baggage that I had was what was stopping me. And I didn't see that back then. Um, and it wasn't until the end of 2019 when I started to get help and I started to sort out my mental health. I started to sort out what I was eating. I started to sort all of that out. Once all of that baggage went away, I watched a David Goggins video, which is the same video I'd watched like three years before, but I rewatched that video. And I got it. I watched it. I remember it so clearly. I was, it was 8th of July last year. Um, and I watched this video. I was sat on the bus on the way to my dad's and I watched this video. And I was mesmerized by it. I was, I resonated with it so deeply that it changed me like that overnight. I had, before, prior to that, I had really bad mental health, I had bad anxiety. I had bad, um, my actions were negative. What I was doing was bad. I knew it was bad, but I didn't know how to sort it out. Um, but that video overnight, all of that went away, which is mad. And to anyone else, that would sound bonkers. Yeah. Um, but overnight, my life changed that evening because of that video. And as I say, prior to that, I didn't understand it until that day. Now I understand it and my life's completely different. And I think... As they say, that's because of you. You know, if you didn't show me him, I, that wouldn't have happened. And um, did you ever have a point similar to that where you had that mental flip? Yeah, I mean, totally. I, I get it. I mean, let's go back to my running because that for me was that mental f flip that was just, you know, take me out and running. I was like, ha, oh, yeah, right, never. <laughs> You know, I remember my first 10K, I was um, uh, trialing to be in the police force and I just did 10K. I was like, I just did 10K, boom. But that was it, you know, I struggled so hard. And when I, because I read, I had friends who ran and I was like, yeah, so what's the point, you know? Because I was a horse rider, I did other stuff and um, I, didn't, I didn't particularly like it, but I had so much energy, I needed to expel it somehow. Anyway, my friend borrowed me a book. That book talked about was called um, Born to Run, uh, Christopher McDougall, about uh, Tama, Tama Umarans in uh, Mexico who runs for days. And I was like, that's mad. Like, crazy, crazy people. Something was planted like you. A seed was planted. Goggins was planted in you. And then it took whatever repetitions for your neuroplasticity to change. So I read this book and I read about people running in the mountains. I was like, can you do that? That sounds amazing. Bonkers. Oh, anyway, I was still doing my odd runs and I didn't, you know, it wasn't really like that. And then I went 
on a holiday for myself to do myself good in the mountains where I ran from one hut to another for five days and I fell in love. And I knew that was my thing. It wasn't about running, it was about freedom. Something switched. And from that day on, that's what, when I came home and did this race, 150 miles nonstop, I just knew this was for me. I can do that. I felt unstoppable. And with that came all, all the, the um, uh, possessions of my inner strength and mental, I, all of that, just like, I exactly know how to live my life. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, exactly. I think, I mean, you knew, you knew me back in 2017, I think, when, as I say, I was at my lowest. And as JCF knows, as the charity knows, as basically everyone knows, um, I was trying to get into the forces my mental health was not getting me there. And I think I knew that, but I didn't want to, I didn't want to know that. I didn't want to accept that. And I didn't want to sort it out. I thought, right, if I can get into the forces, if I can do this one thing, then all my problems are going to disappear, which is not going to happen, obviously. And it didn't happen. Um, but when that flick happened, it's like that, that negativity took me to that point. Yeah, you need the negativity almost. Yeah, um, and it's not until it happens to you, it's not until that flick happens to you that you believe it can happen. And I think what I want to put across to the people that watch this is, it's not just me that it's happened to. It's happened to you, and I'm, it's happened to a lot of people. Yeah. But you know, what would you say to someone that? that doesn't know how to get to that, that doesn't know where to go from where they are? I would say start with dreaming. Imagine the best possible scenario because you need to free your mind from where you are. You need to think about what do you want? Forget about money, forget about you know fear, forget about that. You need to put that aside because once you can open that little door to the light and allow your brain the brain will then give you the chemicals. Our brain is like a pharmacy. Equally, we can produce bad chemicals and we get pain and we'll feel anxious. If you can allow that little door open up to what you really would like to do, that will inspire hope, sow a seed in your brain. And from there, it's gonna be easy for you. But you need to allow yourself to open that door and you need to remember negativity, anxiety, fear creates more of the same. So be mindful of what you're thinking about, but allow yourself to dream. And almost because I spent so many years forcing myself to look in the mirror and smile. And I yeah. wanted to punch that mirror. I hated my own picture. <laughs> no, smile. And that fake smile will trigger something in your brain. Again, the chemicals, your good pharmacy, you will release dopamine, etc. It's brilliant and it works. So allow yourself to dream big. Then you can go around you make making goals and then making, you know, but we're not there. Just start with the simple. Allow yourself to take you away from where you are and think about where you want to be. Everything, and I mean absolutely everything is possible. That's the most important um, uh, lesson I can give for sure. Yeah. So prior to that flick, how much of your day-to-day -day life was taken up by mental health and self-doubt and oh. that negativity? I spent, um, I mean, now we're talking in, 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 like, you know, I'm, I'm quite older than you guys, <clears throat> 45. Anyway, so <laughs> when, you know, I've had so many phases of uh, mental health issues um, and, and been on so many different pills, antidepressants, blah, 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 blah. So I would say around 90% of my time, you know, but I wasn't going around being depressed all the time. That wasn't the thing. It was the inner talk that was eating you all the time. But when I did this before that flick happened, I think I, I worked hard 
to dream that you know what I'm gonna I'm gonna make it happen I I don't know how it feels yet and it feels like I'm faking it but it was fake it until you make it and suddenly a, a change starts to happen it wasn't 100 it's not like a straight linear success you know curvature of success it goes up and down but I could start to feel a shift so you know from being like maybe 90 percent to, to at least 50 50 that's a good bloody start you know yeah. and then the more you practice it you will never be like oh i'm always happy you're always going to have ups and downs but you can control it mm. and that's the key life is always going to happen to us but it's how we react to it that matters isn't it yeah yeah i think a lot of not even just young people i think people in general with anxiety depression mental health mental illness as a whole um they think a lot of the time that that's it you know they'll get a diagnosis and they'll think well that's my life now I'm stuck with this this is going to be like this forever mm. and I used to think like that I used to think mm. prior to last year I used to think I'm going to be this way for the rest of my life I'm going to be unhappy forever you know I'm not going to achieve what I want to achieve I'm not going to get anywhere and it's not until you get that it's not until like you say that seed is planted that you realize it's not that way and it's not going to be like that forever and things can get better but as difficult as it is you you do have to you you do have to fake it till you make it you have to you know almost dream of positivity dream of happiness dream of success before it even starts to happen um so is is your struggle with mental health what turn, what kind of put you towards the hypnotherapy side of your job yeah definitely absolutely i was obsessed with the brain the power of the brain and the mind already as a 12 year age because i got a book from anthony robbins um uh, the power of the mind or whatever it's called i, I don't even remember the title uh, i couldn't i didn't understand a lot but i understand parts of it and it just made me feel like, oh my God, if, if, if I can dream big, then I can do whatever because our brain is, is so amazing. And if we just knew how we could use it, we wouldn't be struggling so much. And this is why I want to say about labels. That's your worst nocebo. That is the worst because as soon as you get a label, you get attached to it and you think as you did exactly as, right, this is it. Oh, okay. My life is limited. Now, it may help in some instances to get a label so you, if, if you need medication or if you need certain types of treatment, but I don't like labels. We can go and label everyone. My profession as a chiropractor is obsessed with labels. So what do I have? What's my condition? Well, you know, it's life. Obviously, you need to be a little bit more specific than that. However, if we walk something in, we need to work within those parameters. And I like to, you know, you're you, you have your baggage. We can label it Gemmaism, and how do we deal with that? That's far more interesting than to say, well, you are bipolar and blah, blah, blah. Mm. Not neglecting again, if you're, you know, if you're severely uh, depressed or whatever, you may have to, to use some medication sometime. I'm not saying that. But I think we get stuck to labels, and that defines you. So throw them away, and again, work with your possibilities. And as you correctly said, Gemma, you need to, think about success or whatever even if it's not even there you need to just imagine it and that's the hardest part right yeah I think um again I think it was Goggins that said it he said you know everything that everything well 90% of what you think that's negative about yourself is other people's words it's other people's words that have been told to you so many times that you think it's your head that's telling you that and it's not, it's a thousand other people that have told you all these things that now your head's believing it because it's, that's all it knows. That's all it's ever heard. And it's not until you feed it, you feed it yourself, you feed it the positivity, you feed it that positivity for long enough. That's what you believe instead. You've got yeah. to block out. And like you say, it's the same with labels. You've got to block out what other people say because other people aren't important. If you believe in yourself, if you believe in what you want, if you believe you'll get there and you believe it's going to happen, then yeah, yeah no, nothing else, nothing, no one else's opinion matters. So no. 
I just, I guess I've only seen this recently and I, I wish I'd have seen it sooner. I wish I'd have paid attention to it sooner. Because I used to think how I imagine a lot of people think is like, this won't happen for me. You know what I mean? Like, I, I don't understand this. How does this happen? It's, it's, it's out there. It's crazy. It's, you know, it's, it's mad. But until it happens, you don't see it. And I think I want to get across to people that it, it can happen. It can happen to anybody. It's just you've got to have the right people and the right words around you to, to have it happen. Absolutely. What you think about, you bring about. And I say to people, dare more dare to go outside your comfort zone that's it you know and I, I'm, I'm super proud of you I haven't because we haven't spoken so I didn't know this it's absolutely amazing you're completely 360 degree change is absolutely amazing because you have that in your eyes you have the belief in you well done yeah. really it's cool. taken a, it's taken a long time um I think the person that was there when we when we spoke was 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 broken to be completely honest um and instead of fixing it I tried to essentially put a plaster over it um and say I don't want to deal with this so I'm just going to push it away um and hope it disappears hope it heals and it won't heal on its own unfortunately um so after um my last recruitment um after I stopped that recruitment, I was like, right, I'm never going to get there if I don't sort this out. Um, so literally after that uh, course, I went on the four day course for the forces. I got back and I said to my parents, I was like, right, I'm done with this. I want to yeah. sort this out because I'm not, my life is never going to change if I don't change me, essentially. If I don't change my behavior, if I don't change what I'm doing, if I don't change how I feel, then nothing's ever going to change. And that I think is the hardest thing to do. Um, Cause like I say, I thought I was going to be that way forever. And I thought I was the worst person on the planet. I thought I was sin basically. Um, and it wasn't until, you know, professional help as well as this charity. Um, if I didn't have them, I would still be believing that. Yeah. And it's only recently that I've discovered that you know everyone makes mistakes everyone does things that they're not proud of and it, that doesn't matter if you get to a point and think right I'm going to change this I'm going to do better from this second onwards then that's what people respect that's yeah. what people relate to is the fact that you've changed and I never thought about it like that before and I think you know it doesn't matter what where you come from or what background you have whether it's positive or negative whether what you've done is bad or good, you know, you, you can change it, you can turn it around. And that's the same with mental illness. It's the same with mental health. And yeah, I mean, life's very different. You know, I, I couldn't run before and I can run, you know, I did my first, I think my first 10K at the end of January. Wow. During the moment we spoke, I couldn't run at all. No. Because um, my head didn't let me. No. Um, so yeah, it's, it's gone a bit mad and hopefully I'll be joining again in September. But yeah, my life's so different. And as I say, if, if I didn't have that switch because of what you showed me, even though I didn't get it at the time we spoke, but I got it later. Yeah. If I didn't have that, then it would have been the same. So but you had, you were you wanted it. You didn't understand it, but you wanted it. And that's the thing. That's the key. Yeah. Yeah. You wanted it so desperate. You didn't really know what it was. But I could see that in you, you really, you wanted it. And I knew it wasn't the Marine per se in that moment, it wasn't. But you wanted something and you were just absorbing it. So, you know, you worked your ass off to be where you are. And that's, you know, that's cred, cred to you. And you need to be happy with that, of course. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think, you know, I have younger, younger cousins, and younger family members who will say, you know, I wish I could do this or I really want to do this, but I'm not going to, I'm not going to try. Or, you know, my family quite often say to me, why are you still trying for this? You know, it's been three years. Why don't you just do something that's easier? And it's like, because if you want something bad enough, 
you don't settle for the first time you fail. No, no. Do you know what I mean? You don't, if you fail once, you don't go, oh, well. No, that's it. No. Do you know what I mean? If you want something, and I think I've always said, you know, when people are like, how much do you want the military? I say with every atom, you have to, like every atom of your soul, every atom of your body, that's how much you want it. And I think until you're literally turned away and say there's no chance in hell, you will try until you get to that point. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, you know I mean, so I just, I, I, I wish that other people would understand that they can do, like you say, you can do anything. Yeah. Anything is possible if you're driven enough. Well, this is thing. I have a motto when it comes to my running, as far as it's, as long as it's fun, it will take me as far as I need to go. And I stand by that because for me, it means that, you know, I, I, I need the joy. The yeah. joy is the training every day. The joy isn't the pain, the aches, the, 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 the early mornings, night, evenings, whatever. But the joy is when I feel I finished something that I thought was impossible still because I'm still chasing that like the next, the next impossible thing. And if I don't like it, I'm, I know I'm not going to finish it. Do you know what I mean? I know I'm not going to do it. And that applies to everything in life. If I don't really, if the, there isn't that spark, then so you need to find the spark. Mm. Yeah. yeah. I think just don't, a lot of people do things because it's easy or they do things because it gives them a lot of money or they do things because, you know, I can get this, this and this out of it. It's like, yeah, you can, but it's not going to make you happy. You need, no. like you say, you need something deep, deep enough in you that you want it that deep, that when you get it, it's going to be the biggest achievement ever, essentially. It's going to be, yeah. you know, one of the best moments of your life when you get it. Exactly. And keeps motivating you. And that is, I just get goosebumps because when you do that, whether that is trialing for your fifth time to the Navy or, you know, crawling across the finish line of a 250 kilometer race, uh, broken and in bits, that, that satisfaction, no money can buy. And mm. your self uh, esteem and self, you know, yeah, self esteem, basically, you just feel, you feel absolutely, and I mean, powerful in a, in a very humble way, you feel humble, you feel wow i mean it's absolutely amazing money has nothing to do with that money status whatever as you say Gemma, it's something much much deeper and that if we could sell that we would be multimillionaires because it's so powerful obviously we can't so which is good go get it <laughs> yeah yeah and uh yeah i say i i have you to thank for that um because i wouldn't have seen it without without that um and I don't think before I thought I had, I didn't think it existed in me. I didn't think drive existed in me. I didn't think self-esteem and self-confidence existed because mine was rock bottom. Um, and I think you don't realise what you can do. You don't realise what's possible until it happens. And all the people, you know, I've had so many people in life that said, you're not going to come to anything. You know, you're not going to get anywhere. I've had teachers say to my, my family, you know, she's a nightmare to teach. And, you know, you're not going to get anywhere. And you too, you know, you, you don't concentrate and you constantly, you know, walking around doing stuff you're not meant to be doing. And it's like, I think back to that now. And I think, well, when I get to where I want to be, it's going to be a moment of, you know, F you, basically. <laughs> it's, a, it's a massive one of those moments yeah. that everyone said I couldn't do it and I think you've got to use that I'm sure you're the same you've got to use that negativity as as a positive fuel to yeah. get to where you want to be because I'm sure yeah. you you've had the like probably everyone oh, has yeah. neg the negative comments oh my god oh you know when 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 I need to fuel myself for for running all that comes back to me and I am defying everyone who was wrong. I am running faster, further, harder, you know. It's just one of those things. I remember a teacher in Swedish, she said, you know, uh, 
you know, you're not really that good. What did I do? I turned out to be a copywriter work, working with the Swedish language. I was like, you. Um, <laughs> doctors have said, you can never run again because I had a surgery in my knee. What do I do? I go out and run, you know, several hundred miles. No, there is no limit. The limit is in here and what you create, you know, so it's good energy, as you say, to turn it around into fuel. So that's all there is. So yeah, bring it on. <laughs> yeah. Um, I say thank you. Thank you so much for, for doing this because it's, it mean, I know it means a lot to me and I know when, when everyone sees this, um, it's going gonna, it's gonna to spark with some people and Absolutely. that's all I want. So. <laughs> everyone has that spark inside of them. You know, society, especially now, you know, we cover ourselves up, we distance ourselves. We need to find that spark. It's so easy to just dampen it, but everyone has it. But it's your job. It's not your mom's. It's not your dad's. It's not your teacher's. It's not your friend's. It's your damn job to bring yourself up, to find that spark, to open that little glimpse of hope. Because no one will do it for you. Life is tough and sometimes really unfair. And this is what we like with Goggins. Just suck it up and deal with it, right? <laughs> Don't molly cuddle. That's not working. If you want something really bad, you've got to work hard. There are no shortcuts. But the reward, oh my God, the reward, it's worth it. So get in there and do it because everyone can, including you who are watching. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Thank you for, for inviting me, Gemma. Well, you inspired me and you still inspire me to this day. So <laughs> oh my I, uh, I know you no, I'm, I'm more people. proud of you. Fucking am Thank sorry. You very much. Super amazing. Super <laughs> But I knew it. I knew it. <laughs> <laughs> I know. And I should have listened to Tina, really. Yeah. But um no, I, I I really appreciate it. Um and thank you for, for coming on and giving your giving your advice to more people because I know yeah. a lot of people are gonna see this. So absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much for having me and enjoy. And uh, I'm sure we will speak soon again and go for a run. Yes. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Do yeah, you want to do 20k, a half marathon? <laughs> <laughs> that would be new for me, but I'm sure we'll get there. Oh, it's fine. It's not a problem. <laughs> yep. Got to believe it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Brilliant. Take care. Yeah, you too. See you soon. Okay. Bye now. Bye. Bye. Uh, you hear Billy on it?